government requires food labels to help consumers know what they're getting. Companies label to entice shoppers and sell products. But as anyone who's ever done the grocery shopping knows, it doesn't always add up to food labels that inform. Chemist and forensic scientist Yvette Dantremont made a name for herself online as SciBabe, S-C-I-B-A-B-E. And she joins us now for 10 questions on how to understand food labeling. It's so good to meet you. You as well. It's because we've talked before. You've been on this program before. Yeah, but it was, it was right after uh, right after my article went viral last year. Yes. And it was it was a, a crazy week. So it was, it, was a, it was one of the first times well, I was on television. But you were on satellite, so we didn't actually meet. So yeah. it's nice to actually meet. Ab absolutely. It was, it's go. wonderful to be up here in Toronto. Question one. Let's start with the nutrition facts chart. How much attention should we give to that first number on the chart, which is Serving size. Serving size is a really big one to pay attention to because if you're not paying attention to that and then you end up having uh, way more than the serving size, it kind of uh, it kind of negates everything else on there because you know it says serving size is a cup and who just eats a cup of say cereal for instance? I know I end up you know nibbling it a little bit more than than just the uh, than just the cup. It makes everything all the other numbers uh, go up as well. So pay a lot of t a lot of attention to that. A lot of attention to especially calories because those. Two. That's number two. You're getting yes. ahead of me. Question two. Oh. What do we know about the calorie count and how much how important that is. It's calories are uh, are a biggie that people don't pay enough attention to because a, an article came out in Vox recently that people that way more people than than realize aren't uh, are are eating more than uh, than they think they are and that's partially because they're not paying attention to calories or serving size. So mm. please, the one of the biggest ones in the label is the amount of calories. You, I, I say don't even pay as much attention to the number of, to the amount of fat, carbs, and proteins because that's those are the those are the macronutrients that make up. Uh, the amount of calories. Pay really close attention to the calories. The makeup of it is far less important. Once again, you have anticipated question ah. three, which is how <laughs> important are the carbohydrates? It's carbohydrates. They are important, but you know, it's. I, I think it's it's an individualized thing. It's how active is your life, uh, how much you know, what's your resting metabolic rate. This is a very individualized thing. Um, carbs are not the enemy that they've been made out to be by a lot of trendy diets. I mean, I ran a couple of marathons. I use carbs to. to to fuel my life, you mm -hmm. need it to fuel, you know, your brain, your life, a lot of things in your in your body. Good carbs, bad uh, carbs. Right? Oh, exa it's exactly, and I think most carbs can be eaten by most people, and, and science backs me up on this. So, you know, if you're if you need more information, talk to or about what you need for your specific needs. Talk to a registered dietitian, but you know, don't worry too much about the fact that oh, there are carbs in it. It's bad. No, no, no. You're in for most people. Carbs are are absolutely fine and a necessary part of the diet. Question four: How about protein? Protein, same thing, necessary part of the diet. And protein is the one macronutrient that we really haven't gotten scared off by um, because it's not one that people look at and go, ooh, that makes me fat. But mm. protein, uh, you're you never, don't, I think people worry about getting enough protein. And we, uh, especially in the Western world, we get far more than enough protein than, than, we, than we need. Uh, I mean, especially like we eat much bigger serving sizes of meat uh, than, mm -hmm. most, uh, than, than most other parts of the world. Uh, you get enough protein throughout the course of a day uh, without you know without even thinking about it so again you know necessary for for uh, for muscle growth and repair uh, but you know looking at that on the serving size you're unless you're a competitive bodybuilder you're gonna be fine without looking at that and stressing about that number I can too see why much. you put that proviso to me because it's it's kind of you, obvious that uh, I'm a competitive obvious. bodybuilder it's clearly clearly yeah. <laughs> oh. Yves, okay oh. <laughs> question five how much is too much when it comes to the fat listing? It's, again, this always depends on the individual. I mean, do you remember Michael Phelps from a few years ago swimming, swimming all those races? Yeah. He was consuming 14,000 calories a day, and I guarantee of you- fat? So, oh, sorry, 14,000 calories a day. Oh, I see, and, okay. and some of that was obviously fat. I mean, mm -hmm. he was having meatball subs, and he was having pizza. I mean, that was, there was, there, they were not fat free. Uh, and we need fat, we need that. Uh, some vitamins are, are uh, fat soluble vitamins, so you need fat in your diet or else you're not gonna be able to absorb those vitamins. But again, Again, these are moderation things. You need to make sure you're getting the right amount, and that's why on the label it says daily value uh, percent of your, percentage of your daily value. You need certain amounts, but you know every single day. Don't stress about getting the exact, you know, hitting that exact hundred percent on the daily value because you know you might go over some days, might go under. In the course of a week, it's if you have a varied diet, you know, with with you know with good grains and with fruits and vegetables, uh, you're 
you're going to get about the right amount over the course of a week if you eat a good diet with, with some moderation in it. Okay, question six. We're going to look at some of the phrases that show up on these Ooh. labels and see what they really mean. Oh, that's fun. For example, like what you're being with me right now. Fresh. <laughs> what does fresh mean when uh, you see it? It's well. It's. I mean, this one generally it means that it hasn't been thermally treated. So, uh, hmm. with the exception of pasteurization, uh, pasteurization just means that you know it's been heated to a very it's, with milk especially it's been heated to a very high temperature uh, for just a few seconds to kill off the pathogens. But with most things, it means it hasn't been frozen um, or it hasn't been cooked. So fresh just means not you know like I said not thermally treated. Does it really mean anything? Not, especially not with eggs. That's a weird one because you can see farm fresh on a carton of eggs. Does it? It indicates nothing about when it was when when, when the chicken you know plopped it onto this planet. <laughs> so like a, a healthy dose of skepticism needed there. Yes, especially. Okay. How about this one for uh, question seven? How little fat does there need to be for a food product to be labeled low fat? Low fat. I believe it's. I, I might be blanking on this one. I believe it was uh, f below 15% uh, of the total calories. I might be blanking on this one on okay. the exact number, but it's below a certain percentage but of does the total it really, calories. Does it re when it says low fat, is it really low fat, it's, or is that marketing? It's. Uh, it's a fairly marg uh, it, it is a fairly arbitrary number, and it also doesn't mean that it's healthy. Like it could be loaded with sugar. I. I mean, you can see on a box of, for, for example, uh, gelatin or or Jello. Uh, I, I don't know if it's the name if. The the name brand box has it or not, but certain box uh, brands will say, you know, low fat or no fat, it's loaded with sugar. So, you know, just because somebody has no fat or no sugar doesn't mean that it's not loaded with another type of calories. It doesn't mean it's, you know, it's a health food. Like, you know, you can have 27 cookies that are fat free, you're still <laughs> loading up on, on carbs and sugar. So look at the total calories, not just one nutrient. Question eight, the difference between low fat and light. It's these can these can on the label mean the exact same thing because light, at least uh, with the regulations in the U.S., tends to mean that you've reduced one of the nutrients, one of the macros, by about 30 percent. So it, sometimes it means calories have been reduced by 30 percent. Sometimes it's that the uh, it's that the fat's been reduced or the sugar's been reduced mm -hmm. by 30 percent. But look at the overall calories, not just the fat, because if they've reduced the fat by 30 percent, maybe the sugar has gone up. So you know they have to find a way to make sure it still tastes. Good good. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, the, the way I tell people to look at this, get the full fat one and just have a smaller portion. <laughs> and, I, and I know that doesn't work for everyone. Well, that makes sense, actually. Yeah, it's like, I, you know, it depends on what you want and what your needs are, which is why it's kind of good that we have this marketplace with a lot of different products. But mm. pay attention to the total calories. Question nine, is no sugar added or no added sugar something we really should be seeking out? Um, it depends on what you want. It depends on what you want from a product, but no sugar added also doesn't mean that that when you look at the back, and this is a front of the label, back of the label thing, no sugar added doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't a sweetener added. It also could mean that there is honey added to it. It could mean that they've mm. sweetened it with fruit juice. There are a lot of different ways. I mean, they, you still want a product that tastes good. So there's going to be sh something sweet added into this thing uh, if it's still, you know, if it's still not, uh, if it still doesn't taste like cardboard. <laughs> so there's there are ways that they can sneak in something, you know, sugary in there, even if it's not, you know, with plain white sugar. Gotcha. Question 10, what does organic really mean <sighs> organic is uh, organic is a, a different way to farm it doesn't notice that it doesn't say no pesticides it says organic and organic is a set of regulations that mean that it's been farmed with pesticides that in general are are sourced from natural sources so this still mean this doesn't mean that the foods are healthier it doesn't mean that the foods are more nutritionally dense at this point uh, organic uh, produce has not been proven to be any healthier whatsoever. And I, I think if, if I ever see proof of this, that it is, if proof comes out, I'll change my mind on it, but it hasn't yet. It just means it's been farmed uh, slightly differently with different pesticides. So, you know, if you find something that's organic that you t think tastes better, go ahead and get it. But I, I think at this point, it's not worth the money for, uh, for, for just using different pesticides. That's 10 questions with Yvette D'Entremont. Sai, babe, it's always good to see you here at TVO. It's wonderful being here. Thank you so much. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.